are all Cardassians bad? Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with your stars, Aaron Eisenberg and Sirach Lofton. We are also joined by special guest, Nana Visitor. How are you, Nana? I'm great. How are you doing? So good. Thanks. My name is Ryan T. Husk, and welcome to The Seventh Rule. Let's get into it. Today, we are covering Duet, one of the best episodes so far. I think we all agree, maybe the best so far in the uh, first season. Uh, Aaron, how you doing? I'm doing great. But before we begin, we got to give a shout out to uh, our JJ, artist, the JJ Lendl, our man who's done our who did our artwork for our show, uh, does has some amazing stuff on his website. Uh, you can find him at www.jjlendl.com. Uh, that's www.jjlendl.com. He's got some great stuff from uh, from Star Wars, Star Trek, um, <clears throat> Raiders of the Lost Ark, X Files. It's a fabulous artist, so please go check him out. Yeah. That sounds good. So this duet episode I think is awesome. Um, I want to really get into it because I think you really ki- killed this episode, Nana. And Knocked it out of the park. Thanks, guys. And so much so that uh, I don't think I s- I've seen a, a stronger female character in Star Trek up until this point. Um, I think you set the bar for it. I, I don't know about the next generation and the original series, which came before. Um, but to me, this is like the gold standard of just strong female performance, strong character in depth. And then the writing is so rich with, with content and color. Yeah. yeah. You know, just real quick. My favorite part of that comment, Sirach was watching a not smiling kind of with a, yeah, I know. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 you know what? It needs to be said because sometimes uh-huh. these things go unsaid, and yes. people people don't say yeah. things that are sometimes very obvious. But you can't tell me somebody before this point in in Star Trek lore that is better or stronger or just just that passionate. Um, and I think that's one of the things that that makes your character so great is is the passion you really lead with your heart you really fight with your passion and uh, i want you to tell me a little bit about that well two things about the passion you know when people would say to me you know this isn't real right Um, (laughs) it it, it wasn't real but it was true at any time uh-oh oh Oh, shoot That's okay. Uh, when she comes back in just a second, I'm oh, sure. Uh, Someone there she is. Lost. Here. Oh, oh no. No, no. It's okay. okay. There you are. Going. It's we like, lost you for a second. Can you just uh, repeat what you just said? It's please? like when I forgot my line in a scene and you just kept going. So you just yeah, keep going. Um, that's what I'll, I'll do. I'll just keep going. <laughs> uh, it, my feeling has always been that whatever I'm doing in a character has been lived before, maybe not in space, maybe not in an orange jumpsuit, but those are minor uh, minor details to me. The, the seat of the emotion, the loss, the, the, the fight for dignity, whatever it is, has, I'm representing someone who's gone through it yeah. sometime, somewhere. So it's always been deeply important to me. Um, the other thing is I was smiling so much when you said that because first of all it means the world to hear you say that second of all i was pushing the envelope now it's like yeah it's a strong woman and that's fine we all accept Mm. it back then absolutely not Mm -hmm. that's 25 years ago i got a lot of pushback why are you trying oh god yes why are you trying to act like a man that's not the way females are strong. But I was trying to say, why do you have an idea of how females are strong? Wow. Why, why does it have to be in a box? Um, it, yeah, everything from the way I sat, because I sat with my feet, mm-hmm. you know, on the ground, and, you know, my, my legs weren't crossed or what's mm-hmm. considered at that time a typical female way of sitting. Um, but that was, or, or even having appetites back then actors tended to, um, copy what they saw other actors do and call Mm. back the truth of life 
as opposed to what's really true. <laughs> and I always try to get back to what, what is really true. Wow. And there's an intensity in your eyes uh, when you're in your performance that it's almost like you're ready to punch somebody. It's like I feel like it's it's like a boxer. It's like a boxer who's like in the ring just about before the fight. Uh, it's it's really intimidating. I, I, where do you get that from? Um, you, I don't know if I got it from Kira from exercising that muscle, but I do make people nervous. And people have said, don't look at me like that. And it's like, what? I'm just looking at you. But I do kind of, when I look at people, it's like, yeah, yeah, I want in. I want all the way in. And I'm going to go all the way in to who I'm looking at. And that can be unnerving, I guess. Um, especially for young sons. My sons were like, oh, mama, please. When they were little. <laughs> Now they can handle me, but back then it was like, oh, it's too much. At this point yeah. in the show, where where were you and where did you think Kira was? Because obviously she has a huge trajectory coming forward, coming up on the show, right, over the next several seasons. And at this point, it's it's pretty apparent she hasn't let go of a lot and 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 she still is almost still in the war. She's still right there's this this battle inside and and one of the greatest things i like about the show that i feel was let they kind of dropped the ball a little bit in in the previous episode with um Renee's character is is your relationship with Odo now um in, in the first was it the first or second episode you have a you you seek his counsel and in this one you do it again and yet and and in a previous one he he um, went to Cisco's council for um, for Troy and, and what have you. And I want him to go to you to build up that relationship even more. So again, I'll, I'll ask that, that question again. So, so that relationship obviously has some history, right? And, and then you're still fighting this war and we see so much of it in this as, as you want vengeance. You, you truly want vengeance. One of the most interesting things I thought they did um, it, with the writing is that the Bajorans were depicted as racist. Mm -hmm. the, the victims of the situation of, of this Holocaust, um, it, you know, and it happens. Uh, but I, in this episode, I, I it came face to face with the fact that even though one could say I, my people were the victim of this aggressive group. I had to deal with the fact I was playing a racist. Mm. I, I absolutely was. And part of my evolution was, you know, to be able to work side by side with Damar by the end of the show. And, and but you know, the, the, the soldiers and Marines coming back from Afghanistan with uh, post-traumatic stress, and you know issues of not being able to leave what you know their their brains have been uh, programmed with what they've been living through. That was where I started with Kira. Mm -hmm. She's messed up mm -hmm. from an occupation, from being a terrorist, from the things she did. And it was during that shooting that show that I realized how. Um, if you're not careful, you can do a lot of damage if you're playing a traumatic role. I started having mm. dreams, Kira dreams, not my own, of being in a labor camp and trying to get away. And the panic was real. The panic I woke up with that night was my body reacting with Kira's reality. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, yeah, it went deep. And it was a traumatic role. It was a very traumatic role to play for seven years, and it did leave uh, damage mm -hmm. that I've had to clean up. Actors were so vulnerable. <laughs> oh, sorry, Sirach. We're so vulnerable, you know, especially someone like you who really sounds like completely opens up herself to the role that you're playing and, and allows everything to come in 
and, and, and in order to, to deliver that honesty and that truth. And, and that, that has that toll, as you say, you know, um, yes. it's pretty, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And I think that's something that maybe others that, that don't understand that other people, they don't realize that, that, that actors that choose that path and how much, how much that really opens them up and how much it, it makes us who we are, you know, and how parallel our characters are to ourselves, you know, um, which is really, really fascinating. Uh, it, it fascinated me so much that I, I've studied and read a lot of neuroscience and I understand a lot more about what parts of our brains react, what actually happens to us when we're acting a character as a character. And um, it's taking me down a fascinating path. I want to, I want to help young actors not feel that they have to abuse themselves hmm. to get into a flow state of acting, which is what I do, mm -hmm. um, and, and learn a healthy way to live with that and do it and come in and out of it. Um, and that's what I'm involved with right now, to, to help young actors do it, do it deep, but know how to get out of the deep, to have a to have to have a rope to come out, mm -hmm. which I didn't have, you know. Oh, that's that's interesting. One thing I wanted to say was that uh, this episode didn't have any special effects. There weren't any spaceship scenes. No fireballs. Uh, and there were, and most of the <laughs> and the, most of the scenes were two people in a room, uh, and it carried the whole show with without any moment of dull, without any moment of. Oh man, I'm not getting enough here. I felt like I was really on the edge of my seat. It was super intense. Mm. Um, and one of the emotions that it draws on for me is the the Holocaust, as you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was watching a, a Nazi soldier and a Holocaust survivor, yes, uh, absolutely, free, freedom fighter, um, argue their points on their, on their perspective. You know, this is what you did to me, and this is why I had to do it. And it, it brought so much emotion. And I, I wanted, you know, I just really want to credit also, who was that that played? Uh, Eris Euling. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my gosh. We were talking yeah. about beforehand oh. how blown away we were by this guy. Oh yeah. So good. Because he really, he really comes, he, re he meets you at that, at that level of intensity. <laughs> and he really brings that out of you as well. So it's, you can really almost, you, I, you almost hate the guy. You know, when he starts to become arrogant about his, about how he I don't lived. know. I don't know if hate's the right word because, because it, it, it showed the gray in, in the situation. You, you, yes, you know, you, the atrocities and everything that happened, but there's something else going on with him, you know, and, 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 and as he was Goldar heel, it was almost me going, I don't think he is. I think he's speaking almost he like a third person. Uh, and, and, um, and, and there's a resentment, there's a tone, there's, there was something in that that was like, wow, this is really, as you mentioned earlier, self-loathing. There is something under, underneath this. And I, I felt like the best bad guys are the ones that you can, in some places, empathize with, mm -hmm. or that you can connect with and go, Ooh, that's scary. And, and again, both of you together and, and like Sirach said, arguing your points. Oh, it was so powerful. It was. And, yeah. and, and, and don't forget, Harris Eulin was a guest star, which it, means yes. he wasn't familiar with yeah. the long speeches. He never had that makeup on, which I had on. And let me tell you, it is not easy to act with mm -hmm. all that. It's so hard. And it, it, it that he was able to do that level of performance oh. and not feel like he was wearing a bunch of prosthetics on his face. It, it was amazing. I thought it was Brilliant. Amazing, amazing performance. When he goes from uh, crying derisively to actual crying, it tore my heart out. Mm -hmm. Tore my heart out. And those yeah. are the wonderful moments for us as actors when you just are like, oh, this is this is what we we want we strive for to have those that ball being thrown back that that honesty between two actors that duet if you will you know mm -hmm. uh, 
And, and, and uh, yeah, and the the moment when he actually at the end when he dies or when he's murdered, when he's killed, it was like the thing you wanted the whole time the most. Actually, now you didn't want, and that mm-hmm. to me is just another like play on how the writers were really brilliant on this show to to put the right uh, moral spins on things and to really question you know how we think and what we think about and how to perceive and I think that you did you did a great job uh, as far as showing that as embodying that in the scene in the performance. Thank you, Sarah.